Hi, welcome to the Market Alert for Monday, the 18th of July 2022. So stocks bid as hawkish market pricing calls uh, while earning season gets underway, according to the Roundup on Friday. And we've got Bullard raises end of year rate uh, view, UOM beats and inflation expectations fall, which is slightly odd. Uh, New York Fed survey encouraging retail sales better than expected. That's not inflation expectations falling. Uh, disappointing industrial output and manufacturing, stellar UNH and C earnings. ECB's rent says bank likely to raise 25 basis points in July and 50 in September. Good luck with that. And this one, Italian PM Draghi determined to resign. So stocks uh, saw on uh, UMICH inflation guess, uh, but there's a catch uncertainty about the inflation is the highest since 1980. That's because at one point it was just transitory, now it's here and it's going to continue. And until rates are actually higher than inflation, or there's a dramatic uh, slowdown, sorry, interest rates are lower than the inflation rate, and unless there's a dramatic uh, slowdown in the economy, then uh, it's not going away either. We'll end up with uh, stagflation. But uh, Italy uh, has its woes. Political drama is haunting Italy's uh, market again. Italian stocks already the worst among Europe's major markets this year can now add a political crisis to the list of headwinds, which include economic slowdown, soaring inflation and looming ECB rate hikes. God, it's going to be a basket case. Davos loses big time. Draghi on the way out in Italy. Yeah, he's jumping ship. He's getting off the Titanic before it goes down. That's why. Uh, used to be the head of the ECB. He got out of that one and gave it to the criminal the guard. As is always the case with Italian politics, the story is always uh, far murkier than the headline. Absolutely. And uh, I agree with this. The only real solution is uh, default. Debt is a double-edged uh, form of power, and so are low interest rates as well, which I will just add to that as well. So on Friday, the news came out, uh, and it was uh, all good news. Um, let me just have a look, make sure I've got this right. So yeah, Friday the 15th, wasn't it? Yeah, the US uh, news was all all positive, but it's inflationary, and yet the market discounted it. And uh, that's because a few Fed members have been murmuring about, uh, well, you know, we won't be continuing the rate rises. And, uh, you know, and if we do, there'll be a 100 basis point one, and then that's likely to be it. And of course, that, uh, that was all the market needed to hear. That means we're going back to printing and we've had 15 years of uh, printing. Well, 2009, so uh, that's 13 years of printing. And that's what's moved the stock market and created the asset bubbles. It won't this time, but... Uh, it's enough at uh, this point to send the markets to the upside. So let's uh, have a look at the markets and see what uh, they did during Friday and what we can expect during today. So in the Dow, you can see there that uh, price is uh, moving higher during Friday session, trading up to the 89% uh, retracement of 31,397. Uh, the best thing to do there is to look at 31,400, keep the, the whole numbers. And then you've got uh, 31,500 as well. Soon do that uh, this morning when the futures market opens. It's uh, just uh, only a, a 100 points. So no problem for the Dow to achieve that. What it does when it gets to this uh, resistance, who knows? But one thing I'll have to do if it breaks through on the upside is uh, redraw these and add in some further targets. And now I can see we've got 89 uh, at the 50 EMA there. And also there's a 78 at uh, this uh, high as well here. So the recent high, we just get rid of that uh, 78 over there. Uh, 31,500 is uh, quite a good psychological level there to find some sort of resistance. But if there's no news uh, to uh, move the market to the downside, then it will continue to move to the upside. And speaking of news, it would help, wouldn't it, if I actually go back here and we just have a look and see what we have got. Uh, we've got... Uh, MPC member Saunders to speak today and then during the week Bailey is speaking tomorrow now I'm thinking about tomorrow I'm not going to be here for Tuesday and Wednesday I'll be returning on Thursday morning I'm a couple of days uh, away with the two hottest ones of the year which is fine by me I'm not uh, overly concerned about that I'm not going to get into a, a, a panic over it being warm uh, unlike the government seems to be at the moment, but that's a different story. And also Wednesday, the most important news item this week is uh, inflation. And uh, the UK on Wednesday morning 
uh, is forecast to come out at 9.3. So again, it's not going away, but uh, at the moment, the markets are moving higher based on that, that uh, they were going to reach a tipping point sooner rather than later. Um, Wednesday, um, what have we got? Anything major? Just again, uh, ECB press conference. Just having a look to see if we've got any. No. No, I was looking to see if we've got any rate rises on Thursday from the ECB. It must be uh, next week then. 26th, 27th is uh, also uh, the US when they propose uh, the 1% uh, increase or 100 basis points, whichever way you want to look at it. So, yeah, the main thing for anybody in the UK this week is going to be the inflation numbers. Bailey speaking, he might preempt that tomorrow as well, so just keep a, an eye on that. So, yeah, back to the Dow. Uh, news driven on uh, Friday and also uh, news driven continuation of that. So, going through Friday's high at the moment, the market will need to stay above this in the 30 minute chart, which ties in with the 20 bar moving average. A bit of a divergence going on there at the moment. Uh, Price is making new highs, but the momentum not going with it. But that could change at 7 a.m. On the downside, coming back through the high, you've got the 50 EMA and the DP and the 200 MA there, plus the Fibonacci retracements as well. In the German DAX, also uh, trading through the 78 and already at 89, we've got 13,000. That big psychological number for the German DAX is also on the cards uh, as well. So it's only 50 points away from what I can see at the moment. It looks like uh, 12,948, uh, 52 points away there to uh, that 13,000. Uh, last time it got to it, struggled and uh, moved lower. Again, you'll have to look in the smaller time frames. There's a 30 minute chart there. As uh, yeah, we're just uh, one. There we go. That's uh, that's going to be 13,000, isn't it? Uh, there it is. Yeah, that red line there is the 13,000. So that's easily achieved uh, at the open of the futures market. And you can see it's already starting to trend to the upside there. Again, on the downside, you've got uh, the 20 bar showing support at the high and uh, Friday's close. You've also got uh, the 50 EMA down at uh, 12,000. Uh, uh, 800 at that level there and then you've got the DP down at uh, the 750 level with ties in with that so there's a lot of support on the downside for the DAX um, certainly uh, looks very positive uh, to try and keep this moving until we have uh, that sort of um, interest rate rise from the US is it next week or the week after where are we today we're on the uh, 18th aren't we yes it's a week on Wednesday and uh, in the five minute charts uh, on Friday, we saw the market uh, have a bit of a sell off to begin with. And then it found support, uh, oversold, demand, crossovers, then changed to green and moved higher. Then a breather through the lunchtime. And then we had the US news at uh, 1.30. That sent the market up, pull back. Again, you can see all of the overbought and oversold and then uh, moving up uh, 120 points out on Friday afternoon. It was a good week uh, last week. Uh, there's the total for the week 74795, 2.15 for the profit factor, uh, 6040 on the win loss uh, ratio there. And uh, the yield, uh, the equity curve continues uh, to move in the right direction just need another say another one of them spikes to the upside but i will be missing for the next couple of days but uh, we're at uh, 55 45 on the win uh, winter loss ratio and 2.3 which is perfectly acceptable in the profit factor there and in the s p this also showing exactly the same as the dow and the d uh, the german dax uh, also above the 78 percent at the moment 89 and then you've got uh, the resistance uh, here at uh, 3918 and then again if we uh, go through there then we just draw the fibs in up to here and the 89 oddly enough will be not too dissimilar from uh, this uh, 3918 high there but you have got that 50 EMA there in the way uh, again on the downside in the smaller time frames just to see if uh, the market does doesn't hold you've got the 20 bar at the high again You've got the 50 EMA just uh, below the uh, 3850. I think that's 3850. Yep. Just double check that. Yep. 
and uh, then you've got the DP. But at the moment, just uh, as I say from Friday, you can see strong to the upside in this uh, momentum carrying on at the moment. Maybe engineered to uh, design the, to wrong foot traders, who knows. But uh, certainly looking uh, uh, quite strongish uh, on the overnight. FTSE also were trading at 89 or just above it at the moment and that's uh, drawn just from there back to there. So again you want to draw in from there back to there and from there back to there and you can see we've got the 200 MA there. We're going to have resistance there with the 50. Again the best thing to do is go down to a smaller time frame and you will see the picture more clearly. And there's your move up on Friday and then we've continued on the overnight to bring the market uh, well back above that, uh, well back above the uh, 7,200 uh, level there, just uh, peeking through that at the moment. Uh, very strong as well, like I say, given the political turmoil that we have in the UK at the moment. But then the market's going to discount that anyway, isn't it? Let's face it, that's what it does now. It doesn't actually factor anything like that into it. And in the currencies, uh, the yen sideways uh, during uh, Friday and uh, overnight as well. Very choppy, as you can see there, just uh, hugging the DP level for Friday. And uh, that's where it uh, remained, as uh, can be seen there, just stuck in a 50 point channel for most of the uh, day. Overnight prices have managed to get to uh, Friday's high or just over there. Um, coming off the close at the moment as well, so attempting to move to the upside. The pound uh, also were moving up as the dollar is moving down. Watch the 89. Also keep an eye on this for Wednesday with the inflation numbers. Uh, that will also uh, spike the market to the upside as it did before when the numbers were released uh, last month. In the 30 minute chart, uh, there's the news for Friday. Again, you can see that uh, they couldn't decide whether it was good or bad news. Uh, they chose to uh, say, well, actually it's bad news for the dollar. They discounted the 100 basis point and they sent the market to the upside. The opposite of what you'd expect to happen. Like I can say bad news is good news or good news can be used for good news. It's uh, just the way they play it at uh, this time. And finally in the metals, uh, silver being allowed to move up at the moment. Uh, don't hold your breath because if there's another rate increase, uh, it's going to get a uh, retest to the downside. 62% retracement there at the moment. Don't forget we have the 1pm fix where they like to slam the market to the downside. And on Friday they did, did exactly that, even despite the fact that it had been moving up. Uh, still more to come on the downside in this market, but at the moment trading above Friday's high which is good news and above the DP and uh, the other averages as well. It's just got through the 200 MA as well. And that's because uh, the dollar is uh, moving down at the moment. And that's in anticipation of a rate increase uh, a week on Wednesday, which will send the US dollar back to the upside. And in the gold market, uh, also uh, being let off the hook at the moment, uh, trading up to the five bar moving average and the 50% uh, retracement there on uh, the overnight, a nice move there, as can be seen in the 30 minute chart there, being allowed to move to the upside. Again, the turmoil on Friday with the Empire State and retail sales. Uh, you can see there how the market was getting pummeled and that's because the dollar couldn't make its mind at one minute it was up and then they brought it down and that's continued down on the overnight, which is allowing the metals a bit of a reprieve to move to the upside. Okay, that will do it for this one. Let's see what happens at 7 a.m. Like I say, keep in mind, I won't be here tomorrow or uh, Wednesday. Be back uh, in the saddle on Thursday morning. Um, but I will be watching the markets and doing the old trade, uh, but uh, just won't be recording because I don't have the mobile facility to take along with me. Okay, that's it. Uh, have a good one. And uh, as ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.